Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend DG Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including the Quantum Zone, this, that, or the third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month. We'll video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capes and lunatics. Hope to see you there. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to their month of the Chai Chester Chat. I am Phil. Wilk is here. And of course, you know who is here. The man. It's all named after Mr. D. Chai <laughs> <laughs> Hello to you both. Um, I feel that uh, we have to update the intro, though, since I, I was just invited to a uh, small convention in Connecticut, and they identified me as the um, uh, astronomically legendary. So oh, we, oh, yes, I like that. Yes. You know, it was a very Carl Sagan kind of uh, kind of statement. So um, but uh, we'll see how that one goes. And uh, anyway, good to see you guys. Uh, thank you again uh, for the invitation back, and uh, and as we were talking about before we started, thank you uh, uh, for coming to this Hershey convention I was at. It was uh, extraordinarily cool to see you both in person and outside of these little tiny boxes. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, with, again, we loved uh, coming up seeing you, and we we're just like, uh, hopefully, he doesn't look too annoyed to see us. But no, it was a great time. No, I was just there was like that. Wait a minute, they're not tiny little box faces <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, all right so yeah hey i was gonna say as annoying as we may or may not have been at least we weren't trying to break down the doors to get to you as like some people did who, who was trying what what remember what? remember that door off to the side there because you were in the oh, oh yeah 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 <laughs> that kind of claiming they finally opened it up and just left it open which made much more sense the flow through uh improved dramatically i think for everybody um, yeah, they just like ripped open these wood double doors and yeah yeah the guy just like wrenched it open and, you uh, heard it cracking i was like oh jeez maybe yeah and I, and I was worried about putting like a print on the wallpaper or like painter's <laughs> tape or something you know <laughs> people were just ripping the doors off the hinges so uh i don't know what i had to worry about that would have been funny if they would have been like what happened here sir and you're like my fans they're crazy exactly i could have like made a whole video out of it and just you know uh, convinced the uh, convince people of my extraordinary pop popularity astronomical popularity. <laughs> ah, oh yeah that's right because yeah you, you said you got invited to another one in uh, connecticut yeah yes a little tiny little tiny one but i think or it sounds tiny but who knows we'll, we'll, we'll go and see just a one day show on the on the 27th close to home though at least yeah yeah sort of you know connecticut's like a tiny state but it's like when you start to drive to places it, everything seems like it's forever away it's about an hour hour and a half so it's not that bad but um oh yeah I, I, knocking on wood since it took me seven and a half hours <laughs> to get back from <laughs> but yeah no i saw on uh, uh social media it must have been quite the adventure getting home huh oh it was horrifying it was the worst <laughs> it was like you know it was like three and a half hours to get there we're figuring like smooth sailing and uh it was you just know how society is going to break down you know, ultimately, as if it are, hasn't already, because, you, you know, apparently there's some big accident on I-78, which was the major oh. road back. And um, and and it just the GPS for everybody, you know, for hundreds and hundreds of cars just kept pointing everybody to, to I-78, even though it was closed down. And so you had all these cars going in giant circles and and then. It was just rerouting everybody back to I-78, which you couldn't get on for 20-odd uh, exits. And all you did was have public works workers blocking the roads and directing people away from it with no knowledge of what to do. Everyone's following their GPS. They're going in giant circles. And finally, you know, the last I saw of it was, you know, this woman just got out of her car in the middle of the road, and she's screaming at the poor public works guy, I've been in the same goddamn circle you know 14 times what do i do and he's just pointing for her to get back in the circle and my wife finally just you know inarticulately but correctly just said we have to go north go north <laughs> and i don't know what that means i don't even know what direction is north but the point you know we finally 
arrived at was just to go so far north that we would avoid on the back roads of Pennsylvania, which were interesting, uh, <laughs> to, to then get onto another major roadway, which would take us east. But that ended up adding between all that and everything like three plus hours to the adventure. So that's all right. We go. That's all right. My wife decided to put a different route home on the GPS. And then meanwhile, we ran into this huge thunderstorm. I could barely see like two feet. Oh, that's me. fun. That's yeah. Fun. Meanwhile, I got that one over there snoring in the back seat. Okay. So we need to throw one up for motion sickness. That's so, true. Yeah. That's true. I'm sure my son would have loved to have you throw up on him. Yeah. <laughs> Better, better to better to rest, and so you close your eyes a little bit, and you're and you're there. What's the big deal? We've arrived. It's all good. It's the way to travel. Yes, exactly. I'm, I'm, Passenger princess, one hundred percent. Yes, I am very interesting. We're in the middle of conversation. Next thing I know, she's like asleep in the back seat. So it's a lot right. of questions for this book. Oh <laughs> yes, oh yes, that's right. The reason we're here. Uh, yes, yes, kids, we are here uh, to talk. Hold on. Wait, right. wait, I want to show my mini poster. Oh, okay. But there's what we're talking. Night oh, stock nice. number one. Very, so. very nice. The kickoff, the, the literally the rise of the midnight suns. Exactly. Oh, there you go. Nice. That was and nice that it came could... in a poly bag with a little mini poster. I that yeah. is my goal in life is to find an original unopened poly bag, actually. I've seen people with them, and then if you collected all six, you could, I yep. guess, ostensibly tape them together in some janky way and get a giant Qbert poster, which would would have been cool. But so yeah, I think uh, we were talking before you jumped on here. I, I think the, our, one of our big questions is, uh, what are the challenges? Or you know, I'm sure it's not the debuting the a number one in the middle of a crossover because this was like part five of a six part crossover, but it's a number one of a new series, so. Right. Right, 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 right. Um, well, that was, you know, it, that was part of the whole um, genesis, you know, of this whole thing. Also made that kind of easy, although the, the first issue is horribly overwritten in, in a lot of ways. But um, because none of this existed, you know, beforehand, right? All these characters existed somewhere. Morbius existed somewhere. And certainly Ghost Rider existed. And Frank Drake and Hannibal King and and uh, Blade obviously existed. Um, the Darkhold existed. I don't know that those characters existed before Chris uh, Chris Cooper came up with them. Excuse me, the Emmy Award winning Chris Cooper. Um, you know, so the the first part of it was was well pitching the book, right? Because they and, and by that I mean literally, <clears throat> Bobby Chase was trying to create. You know, her her X Men her what a supernatural X-Men family for herself and knew that they wanted to do something with these characters, but had no idea what. So she, she opened the door, I think to a number of different people to sort of say, what would you do with Frank Drake and Hannibal King and blade? And that's where I pitched night stalkers, right? That they would be this badass bunch of ghostbusters essentially who had been so uh, uh, burdened and made to suffer because of the supernatural that they, literally hated the supernatural and would use their supernatural powers to destroy everything supernatural. And then ostensibly in the last issue, they'd kill themselves. But, um, <laughs> but um, so that was the first part, right? So that was just pitching that and then saying, yeah, this is a great concept. And and then the weirdo le uh, logo that you did on your bad inkjet or your, excuse me, dot matrix printer um, is essentially what they used for the night stalkers logo as well. Um, got somebody to clean it up. Um, but then it was getting us all together to say, all right, well, how do these books tie together anyway? So they had all these separate books, but no concept for how they would interconnect at all. And, and so that was part one, you know, Ghost Rider had been hugely successful. And, and so that was part of what they wanted to build on it. Um, Howard hated the whole idea because Howard was having fun doing Ghost Rider and ruling the roost and suddenly he's got to work with a bunch of people. He didn't want any part of it um, until, you know, this get together. Um, and then so we all got together on this two day retreat. And that two day retreat was where we started kind of spitball these ideas of how would this even work? Uh, what are these? Why, why do they why do they relate to each other? Um, you know, uh, Len Kaminsky brought 
cigarettes, um, uh, <laughs> maybe tobacco, maybe other ones. I don't know. Oh my! Uh, <laughs> definitely tobacco ones. Um, you know, I brought like a you know a two foot, three foot stack of books on the occult. Um, Howard brought a bad attitude. Um, <laughs> you know? And you know, when we were all going around the horn, but there was one point, you know, at which, and I'm, I'm joking about Howard, you know, I love um, and love his writing, but but there was a turning point in that meeting where, you know, one of the initial ideas being thrown out was when Howard went from kind of sitting in the corner or over by the window, like, you know, when is this going to be over? And then it suddenly got interesting, right? We would throw ideas out. And then one of those ideas was like, yeah, that would be cool to play with that. And so we then started to kind of stitch together. Well, why are, why do they relate to each other? Why are they all here? What's happening? Who's the big bad, you know, who's going to be their, the magnet that's going to draw them all together, which is then where we started to come up with, with Lilith, you know, with the, the big monster, mama monster uh, type thing. So once we started to map all that out, we had, were also mapping out the baton pass, right? Be between everything. So, okay, Ghost Rider is going to end here and it's going to pass over to whoever was next, Morbius. And Morbius is, well, I can't remember the exact order, but then, you know, Morbius is going to end here and it's going to pass the baton to Spirits of Vengeance, you know, and that's going to pass the baton to Darkhold or, or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. So we, we had the beats, you know, after we had the big concept. And because this was still at this point very friendly and casual and we all liked each other and wanted it to succeed it was really easy to say i'm going to end the book here is that cool with you can you pick up on that and then go and and then end the book here mm -hmm. and you've got these points to relate in your story right you've got to establish this or you've got to make the point about lilith and you've got to use dr strange or whatever you've got to do so it was not actually that hard um once we sort of got past that initial why are we all here and what are these things you know coming up with because this wasn't we came up with the midnight suns the mm -hmm. construct you know we came up with the <clears throat> with the name of it we came up with the what are they you know why are they together why are these nine or so you know supernaturally oriented characters suddenly bound together when they hadn't been before and what unites them and how do they operate as a sort of a team but then also break up and split up and that sort of thing. Um, so even though that was part five of six, it was part of that larger conversation. It was, as I said, relatively easy, although, you know, it, it gets pretty purple prose in that first issue um, a little, you know, way too much. You know, it's, you know, in the darkness of nights when the rats plow the streets or whatever. I don't remember. It's I'm trying to forget it. But <laughs> well, I mean, you're setting a horror vibe. I mean, you got to kind of set the mood, don't you? Yeah, that's fine. But, you know, I could have done I could set the mood with a third the amount of words. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And like the, what you're saying about passing the baton. So I assume the order of the books was um, de determined by the shipping dates. Was that how it worked? Yeah. And and and, you know, popularity and you know release right and i'm pretty sure ghost rider opened it right and then and then the spirits of engines might have come next even maybe for a two for punch or that might have come in the middle like i can't remember i think dark hold was the last one um but but we, we had established what they would be and then once we knew what the order was then that would have been driven going to sales and then establishing the shipping dates and and moving from there and then that would have been based around because Ghost Rider was the established title and was already running, then that would have been the the one everything had to base itself off of and around. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, but, and then you, ha you had all those characters. Yeah, I mean, you had Ghost Rider and Blaze in this issue. Doctor Strange was in this issue. So, I mean, that, w I mean, was that kind of required where it's like, yeah, this is a big crossover. We want to showcase everybody. I mean, there um, wasn't, there wasn't more, Morbius in this, but it was a, just you were like, oh, this is going to make it a lot easier to explain, you know, explain well, certain things. Yeah, I mean, certain things. the Midnight Suns, they're not just, you know, everyone's just off on their own. And I can't remember if Ghost Rider showed up in, in all of the initial issues. Um, he might have, uh, you know, again, for sales reasons. Right. Yeah, you know, yeah. Use your biggest magnet to even though it's a standalone book, Ghost Rider sort of the 
what was the star feature. So he might have he might have showed up in every first issue. And then I got saddled with, I think, you know, explaining yeah. more of the Lilithness of it all. So the Lilithness of it all was, you know, had was to make you kind of strange. And that was the biggest, not the biggest, but one of the stupider things about the Midnight Suns uh, situation ultimately was um, the fact that we were, you know, we were strange should have been the doctor you know, Zay, the Professor Xavier of the Midnight Suns books, mm. right? That, that why wasn't he, why didn't he play a bigger role? And the reason he didn't want to play, it didn't play a bigger role is because the editor of Doctor Strange didn't want to give up control of Doctor Strange, right? Mm. You know, and that was the feeling that if, if he, you know, if that, if Strange was allowed to become a big player in this, there'd be a land grab <clears throat> and suddenly Strange would no longer belong to Office X uh, Strange would become would belong to Bobby Chase and you know the Midnight Suns realm, which they didn't want to happen. Even the oh, which, and that's been one of the bigger questions I think over the years when when Night Stalkers the Midnight Sun stuff has come up. Well, why was it Strange playing in the space more? Because he should have, right? Yeah, and that's yeah. what we had to do. You know, we we came up with this stupid conceit. You know, which Strange says in this issue about. You know, we are too powerful to be in the same space, you know, with Lilith or some nonsense like that, you know. So therefore, you know, these, you know, these poor feckless, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, other other supernatural characters have to deal with you and uh, and get beaten up by by you. While I, the Sorcerer Supreme, get to, you know, sip milkshakes on, you know, Bleecker Street. Uh, what, an what, evil name. Name. what an evil name too, Lilith. Hey. Uh, I'm just hey. my book. <laughs> <laughs> but that was that was I mean I, I get to take credit for that one you know because that was uh, flip that was the in the unformed space of of you know who the big bad was going to be I mean that was one of the occult books and sort of flipping through it and just explaining to the people who didn't know some did um, but the folks who didn't know in the meeting that Lilith was the first wife of Adam Right. And that was, you know, the whole, uh, you know, kickoff from there that, well, she had been wronged. And then in being wrong, she had turned, you know, evil. And this wasn't the biblical Lilith, per se, but okay. even in some stories of of that biblical Lilith or offshoots of that story, you know, she has her own children called the Lilith, which mm -hmm. is what then again, we, we took that name and then expounded on that in twisted and strange ways. And, and Howard would actually be be contacted years later. They never contacted me, but uh, um, somebody who was writing an academic paper, that might've been a rabbi, um, about the use of Lilith in popular culture and contacted Howard, you know, well, how did you guys know so much about Lilith? And, you know, so even though I don't think we ever returned to any source material after that first you know, sort of exchange, we just ran with it. We apparently kept building on enough things that, it, you know, it, it, it aligned back to the mythological, semi-historical stories. Hmm. Cool. Uh, so I, I love, it. that is the funniest thing where, you know, someone's like, you know, you have this big get together and it's just like, I brought pizza, I brought this. And then, you know, Dan's Here's like, I brought, books, nerds. I, brought, I brought a whole shelf from my vast occult library. Oh yeah, I mean, I still have all those books. I mean, oh, nice. the books over the years. I mean, those those ones have stuck around. The Dictionary of Demons, and you know, there's, there's very some really interesting books. stuff. Um, yeah, there's, there's well, great. Ben, you love that stuff, so I'm like, yeah, of course. If they do Midnight Suns, they got to include you. I mean, <laughs> get that Hellraiser guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, I mean, I think it was more, you know, because you have to remember the Hellraiser stuff and anything else was not looked on didn't exist as far as Marvel was concerned, right? Marvel editors had no concept of what was going on at Epic. It, oh, it, yeah. you know, it, it, with few exceptions, um, you know, Mark, Mark McLaurin. Um, but I had used um, Ghost Rider in a Daredevil issue. Yep. And, and Bobby had been impressed with it, you know, however I'd used him, to actually the point where she mentioned it to Howard several times. I really like what Dan did with Ghost Rider. To the point where Howard was getting a either sick of it or worried about it, you know that he, <laughs> and, you know, like, uh, you know, and I don't want anybody else touching Ghost Rider. He was like, 
well, maybe you should use Dan for like, you know, this, this new thing we're talking about. And <laughs> so I, I only got much to do with my Hellraiser or other horror creds. Um, and at the same time, I was pitching Son of Satan, which is the book I really wanted. Um, and uh, when they were relaunching Son of Satan and, uh, you know, I, I was I was certain I was going to get that. And I even oh. remember saying to Bobby, you know, well, you know, I'm pitching this and, you know, and but I just want you to know I'll be able to do them both. You know, it won't get in the way. Um, but then, that you know, Son of Satan ended up going to somebody else. And uh, and um, and that was, you know, cleared the way for this, which ultimately was better, I guess, in some ways. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know if I ever told you. I remember that uh, when that Dare, when Daredevil showed up early or, or uh, Ghost Rider showed up early in your Daredevil run, like I was uh, talking to some kids because, again, I was a kid. I was just they're just like, yeah, at the end of 294, it said he's heard a sound of an unnatural engine. Is that the Punisher coming? I said, no, we just did the Punisher, idiot. So I'm like, we got this big in the middle, you know, so I think we're sitting by a public pool. I'm like, no, you idiot. You just did the Punisher like like an issue or two ago. There's no way. Yeah. But other no guys gonna do that? No, he's. Even though I really didn't know much of your writing at that point, I'm like, no, he's not gonna do that at that point. I was doing, I was doing Chichester chats like 30 years before we started this. No. Exactly. <laughs> See, only had a microphone then. Exactly. We've got an early episodes. Only had internet. Yes. Uh. uh say so. So did you get to set the roster for this team or was this like a group decision? Uh... I mean, they, that's where Bobby had, had come to me, um, mm -hmm. you know, initially, you know, you know, do you know, do you know the characters of Frank Drake and Hannibal King and, you know, Blake? And I did, you know, tangentially, right? you know, I, I was aware of them. I knew what they were, I knew what they did or what they represented, but I, I hadn't really been a huge fan of like tomb of dracula where they spent a lot of time or anything um, i wasn't not a fan it just wasn't something i really you know spent a lot of uh, time or, or effort with but i knew what the characters were so she said you know her her pitch to me not to 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 not we don't know how they interact or what they're going to do or how do they exist as a as a as a team or whatever where they're not just fighting dracula right they just didn't want a, a book about vampires um so that's where then i went away and and kind of came back and 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 looked at it and said well i wonder if they did this what if they what if they acted this way because of what they've gone through um and, and to talk about like not even really like a connection to probably horror sensibilities. I remember being a little worried. I liked the title, but I was a little worried about the title. And I said to Bobby, um, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to make a connection to the Night Stalker, you know, the, the Darren McGavin, yeah. you know, show. Um, I think we're OK since it's just Night Stalker. It's Night Stalkers and it's one word. And she just looked at me like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> leave that to legal <laughs> no no not even that she just had no awareness of the show or the thing at all so there was no yeah it, may, it would have if there was an issue it would have been left illegal but it wasn't like you know i would have i had assumed she was aware of the show but i don't i don't think she was much of a of a horror fan ultimately i have to say my favorite character in this issue is meat market <laughs> oh yeah, they're all gross. They're all gross, disgusting characters. They're way too gross. I mean, ultimately, I love it. He is. Meat Market's fun, but um, and he's got a good name, but um, it's it, the 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 book is overly grisly after a point, you know. <laughs> I, I don't mind it. It's right up my alley, personally. <laughs> like I was one of those randos reading to the Dracula <laughs> and all that stuff at this time. Big fan of uh the the. Not, not necessarily like the magic side, but the supernatural side of Marvel for sure. Right, right. No, there's a lot of cool stuff there. Yeah, when I say I, you know, you know, I hadn't read Tomb of Dracula, it wasn't because I don't respect the work or didn't like the work. It just wasn't one of those things that was had pinged my radar where I was deeply into it. Oh, and I love, I love the gun too, Linda, as in yes, as an exorcist. <laughs> yes. 
yeah, I thought that would play out a little better than it did. I mean, it played out fine for me, but, you know. No, I thought it was, it was clever. I mean, you know, it, it was a little clever edge to, you know, the 90s, everyone had a huge gun. So, I mean, right, it, right. It, here's the reason for the huge gun. <laughs> <laughs> and it has a cute name, yes. Uh, oh, and I, lo I love the part when Lilith just like strolls into the office, you know, all, you know, in a nice little dress and the hat and everything. And they're just like, wait, she think we're buying this? <laughs> <laughs> that was cute. And I th I'm trying to remember if we talked about it when we talked. We did talk issues eight and nine with uh, Morbius, but uh, Ron Garney's art. I thought Ron Garney's art was. Oh, uh, Ron was on fire. Ron was, was yeah, Ron did great, great work. Ron defined everything, you know, obviously visually with that book and attitudinally and you know gave it its energy um yeah he was he was just great it was great to work with him on a more extended basis you know because before we had only worked on that one daredevil issue really and then the tried you're talking about? yeah yeah oh, it walks in yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and um and uh you know i'm, I'm sure you know ron lost the buttons on the blouse and you know kind of thrilled <laughs> <laughs> for all my for all my descriptive powers, I don't think I went to that level of uh, of uh, you know sex appeal. Um, but uh, yeah, he really you know he really just delivered and delivered and delivered on on the book all throughout. And I was gonna say, did Ron, was Ron in charge of like the redesigns? Because I know at one point when uh, Blades leaving the uh, hospital, you know, basically they show like, leaving the uh, sun the old sunglasses or whatever behind. So was that just was Ron in charge of like the newer design? Yeah, it, I mean, yeah, Ron did everything visually, you know, in terms of, of, you know, trying to kind of update the characters and what we did with them initially. And then, when, you know, a little later on, we try to give them a little bit more, uh, you know, edge or more unique visual, you know, look where it wasn't just the flowy, you know, um, uh, old school, um, uh, um, you know, kind of draped, you know, a, a, classic hammer film look on stuff and something a little bit more you know with with blade we tried to try to do things with that i think his look the looks he did with them you know were really cool oh uh, yeah it's something we should have done you know really right from the get-go in, in retrospect just to make them more identifiable you know visually identifiable and stand out so it wasn't just guys right i mean blade had a cool name but you know you know, Hannibal King and Frank Drake did not. Maybe we should have given them names, you know, too, in retrospect, yeah. you know. Mm. Well, they, they showed up in that Blade Trinity movie. <laughs> kind of. Yeah, they do, right? You know, and they use the term Night Stalkers, right, yeah. at some point. Um, although they're not quite. Yeah, that. not quite. <laughs> yeah, so I, I got nothing, you know. I um, got nothing for that. They and, tweaked it just about that, and, and I have to give a shekel. Not even, well, not even, a, you know, a little micro credit and because they don't really, they're not featured. And then, you know, upsettingly, which, you know, is that Mike Midnight Suns game, you know, which made such a big deal out of bragging about like, oh, yeah, we based it on Lilith and it's such an important part of our storyline and everything. It's like, you know, we got we got nothing, you know, on any of that. So talking about covering your ass, wasn't it like S-U-N-S or something? And they went, yes, they went S-U-N-S, yes. That was that, that's that's the that's the major dodge, you know. Mm -hmm. I like I the setting of name. Boston. Huh? Uh, I like the setting of Boston. In so did I. Yeah, I I I, uh, it's I didn't very know historical Boston. and yep. old, and it has a lot of connection. Well, the state itself has a lot of connection to some mystical stuff and ley lines and stuff like that. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, that was that was my thinking, you know, and like, and you know, let's do something that's not New York, and not San Francisco, you know, which was you know another obvious choice because you know. Uh, you know, trippy, uh, you know, hippie type stuff and some supernatural connections there. But I, I really like, I didn't know Boston well at that point beyond just research and reading and buying books on Boston and, and um, you know, maps and trying to kind of use landmarks and make it feel like it's, it was a real thing. But I, I, I thought the whole, the, everything you just said, the history, the ley lines, you know, the you know, the connection to Salem, you know, the closeness to Salem, those sorts of things were all things I tried to draw on and hope to draw on more of. And and lots of cool graveyards, of course. Yes. 
And I mean, it is kind of nice, so, you know, when you can't get a Marvel book that's not set in New York, because so many of them are set in New York. It's like, okay, why didn't they bump into this person or this person? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, and then they're all tripping over each other, you know. And, you know, that's understandable. New York's huge, and that's where a lot of people worked and were or came through, and so it made perfect sense in that larger scale of things, but it's nice to sort of shake things up, too. So, so uh, oh, sorry. Go no, good, good, good. So, outside of Ghost Rider, what was another character you were really excited to like include and in, like to, to work with in this bunch, or was it just everybody across the board? No, I mean, I, I want it more strange. I love the idea, the, the chance to write Doctor Strange. I mean, even even in a little bit, I would love to have done more of him. Um, uh, you know, and Blade was, <clears throat> I mean, he was one of the main characters, but he was he was a lot of fun. The Dark Hold guys, I didn't really glom onto you know so much um not because i didn't you know they were hard i think for anybody except chris maybe to work on because chris could or maybe i just didn't use them correctly but chris could devote more time to them as individuals whereas when you're sort of using dark hold concepts on its own you, you kind of default to the the evil page you know sort of thing and then it becomes the imp and it's just sort of like this you know, bad Friday the 13th, the se- not bad, meaning the book was bad, but I mean, you know, this Friday the 13th, the series, you know, type of thing of like, if you ever saw that TV series, you know, where yeah, it was that weird uh, haunted horror. artifacts. I'll, I'll use horror in quotes. It, right, right. You know, like, so every every uh, item in that pawn shop was cursed by the devil or something. And, and then, you know, so every page of the book is cursed and, and, and you're going to go along with it. But, um, you know, it would have been interesting to do more with, with those characters, I think, you know, to play them out. Ghost Rider was always fun to play with um, as, as that, you know, just pen and stare, you know, type of thing. Um, and Morbius, I think I got my fill of on um, on Daredevil anyway, since I had used him so extensively in, in Fall from Grace. So you think if you could have picked any of them to, to, to do a monthly book on, uh, would it have been Doctor Strange then? Is that oh, absolutely. I, I should have, you know, in, in the retrospect of you know, of things in life and, you know, being more assertive or aggressive about things. I, I wish I had pitched, um, even if not strange, the book, you know, a strange special. I mean, I did pitch a, a, a strange, you know, special with, with Mark Nelson. You know, we had done, we had pitched this uh, and and sold, you know, this a, a larger scale what if story, you know, that was called um, uh, Hexpionage. Right. So it was it was I think I mentioned this before. Yeah. And it was, you know, in a in a world where there was supernatural kind of everywhere, strange run shield and and Nick Fury works for strange in some capacity. And so um, and that was, you know, one of the basic parts of the story. So it was uh, and Mark penciled, you know, half the book before it. it it went up in smoke because Marvel crashed in 90, whatever it was. So that book just got left oh, homeless and nothing ever happened to it. And, and, uh, never too late to repitch. I, you know, if I could get CB Sobolski's ear, I, I pitch it because I stole the pages back from Marvel and sent them back to Mark because they were, they were, nobody was, was owning it. It was sitting in a drawer. They were going to be thrown out probably. I mean, that's how bad it was. I mean, there's a lot of artwork stolen or thrown out at that point. So I took the art and sent it back to Mark. See, Phil didn't believe me. I, I was mentioning that to him. I didn't say it in so many words. But yeah, like at that, when that particular time, a lot of stuff got like, quote unquote, lost yeah. and forgotten. And it's been right. a shame. And I, when I say steal, I mean, I just sent no. it back to him. I yeah. like literally steal. I just sent it back to Mark and said, well, you hold on to this because I know it'll be safe with you. And and then hopefully we can get something going. And I tried to bring this up to whoever was left, but you know, the place had been devastated and people were, were shell shocked and worried about their jobs. And, you know, suddenly, you know, they were cutting titles. They weren't looking to add stuff, you know, at that point. So there, there was a no win scenario there, but I mean, Mark just did some phenomenal stuff. I mean, there's a two page spread of, um, of the helicarrier, you know, which is, you know, this gigantic supernatural castle in the sky with, you know, instead of, you know, Quinjets, you know, flying around it, you know, or it's, you know, it's dragons. And it's just, you know, it's amazing. 
Oh, come on. I wanted, the girl, I wanted the girl with the legend of you, like, repelling from the ceiling like Tom Cruise in that first Mission <laughs> Impossible movie, you know, pulling yes, out, yes, yes. out of the drawer and stuff. No, uh, it's sort of like more like walking to look what was left of Marcus's office. And, you know, nobody was there. And, you know, is anybody doing anything with, you know, his flat files were there. And it's like, anybody doing anything with the stuff? And, you know, nobody's, nobody had an answer for anything. So it was, you know, it was, it was sad, bad times. Oh my god! But I would have loved to seen some Doctor Strange from you. You know that would have been got so dark and so demonic. You know the editor would become a newbie in every month. Pull back, Dan. Pull back. That's too much. It's too. No, I mean you know Strange is. I mean I probably would have. You know he's only in a handful of pages there, right? Yeah. Night I mean like a month. It was more like that. It would have been sort of imperious and interesting and crafty and you know delving into uh, you know not just the horrific and the demonic, but I think there would be. An interesting place to spin out the magic, you know, ness of it, you know, the sorcery, you know, where does that like lead him? Um, I would have hoped I would have done, you know, things like that. Um, you know, the, the 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 Night Stalkers universe, you know, is is sort of, you know, very dark, and I don't I don't know that I would want to go on as dark with a strange thing. I don't think anybody smiles in that book. Ever. <laughs> well, well, it was the '90s. A lot of people. Oh, didn't okay, yeah, it was the 90s. Yeah, even even by '90s standards, I think Night Stalkers is like particularly <laughs> like particularly grim and fierce. Uh, but okay, I want to manifest this into the universe. I think what we need is a a, a monthly Marvel horror anthology book by you. Again, it could be a different character every month. You know, it could be Doctor Strange, it could be Ghost Rider, it could be Werewolf by Night, but. The person that introduces the book every month, uh, Crypt Keeper style, is Tear. But that's I <laughs> didn't I tell you the story? That that, uh, that is that is that is the proto Midnight Suns. Ah, <laughs> that's what you know. That's how Tear ended up in the in the Marvel universe. Was oh, maybe he did say Carl yeah, Pops yeah, and called and said, it. "Yeah, yeah, yeah wanted to do right. it. Yeah. Anthology. They wanted to feature different." horror characters werewolf by night you know whatever frankenstein unbound whatever it was um a living mummy i don't know and and but they wanted terror to be or shrek to be the script keeper so oh, you know the, the initial charge was you know figure out a way to get this guy over here and how would you use him as a crypt keeper and introduce these characters and sort of interact with them and then let them tell their stories and maybe maybe be in the story with them and uh, and then uh you know so that's where the work had begun and you know changing the name and okay he's going to be this he's going to be that um but then they they carl said well they no, they've got some ideas they've got other ideas for the horror characters and at that point i didn't know what that was and then then that's when i had said okay well i guess this is dead and he said no no we're gonna, we're gonna do it anyway you know as its own self-standing book but it's interesting that you know i would have thought ultimately the midnight suns you know in retrospect you know should have pulled in some of the other more yeah heavy hitters or at least more recognizable horror characters i mean morbius is okay but he's still a little fringe you know hannibal uh you know hannibal and frank are definitely hit uh, the fringe um you know why didn't we pull in werewolf by night why didn't we pull in man thing you know um and and part of that reason again may have been editorial ownership you know, nobody, you know, Bobby was able to lay claim to these other characters either because they sort of fell within her her realm because of some historical thing, or maybe she went to some editor and they're like, I don't care what you do with it. I'm not doing it. Um, and maybe she tried to get those. We never really talked about that. Yeah, it might have been editorial because, I mean, they did have that Secret Defenders book, for, you know, with Doctor Strange putting together a different team every time. And again, right. Spider Man, Captain America, Wolverine. So, yeah, yeah. it wasn't be like supernatural for the most part. Right, right, right. So, so, so I guess, yeah. I mean, I'd heard stories about that, but so, yeah, people were really staking their territory back then and basically just like, what, did they didn't want to lose a bulk under their, uh, like editors didn't want to lose bulk under their uh, control? Yeah, I mean, typically then, and maybe, and now to some extent, because, oh. you know, I, I think I mentioned like at one point, you know, the Red Skull was supposed to be the main villain in, in Black Armor. Right. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was that was my initial pitch. And, you know, wouldn't have changed the story dramatically, but would have certainly changed the tone of certain things. And we, we had the go ahead for from the office that owned the Red Skull. 
but then they pulled that permission um uh and then that's when we had to you know fall back but but or or rethink it rather um but that was you know always the case that you know editorial offices own characters whether they were in a regular book or because the book or because the character has a relationship to the main character you know I'm, I'm assuming like whatever office has thor owns loki you know even if loki is not in a regular monthly book or something like that mm-hmm. so um and and loaning a character out was sometimes easy relative eight times out of ten would be easy can i use carnage <laughs> <You know? laughs> and as long as carnage isn't in a big story that same month that would cause a conflict you know the editor would say yeah okay you know and then they'd read the the you know the script make sure you're not doing anything like you know carnage make it nice make yeah, sure he make has his nice. optimal kill right <laughs> right 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 um and then you know then it would be okay but i think the concern as i sort of picked up at the time and then more so i think over 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 time uh was that they wanted to the, the midnight sun's offices bobby's office you know didn't want to just use strange they wanted to own strange you know they wanted, uh, they, wanted they wanted strange to sort of like i said be that professor x which makes sense right yeah, yeah. they're a heavy hitter the the most heavy hitter magic character in the marvel universe is dr strange so if this if there's if this whole thing is about this epoch of of unleashed darkness and evil why is and he's why isn't he more involved on a on an issue to issue or at least you know month to month basis you know showing up and directing things and advising and manipulating and doing this but i think the um i think there was a combination of um they definitely we're not going to give you the character right and, and I think there was a, an attempt to sort of make it a land grab. And then I think that editor, who I think was Ralph, maybe, or Macchio, at that point, um, y- you know, just, you know, put their foot down. And then maybe didn't want didn't want to even loan the character out because didn't want it mixed up in, in this other thing for fear that it would become uh, a land grab. You know, no. remember, like, Kingpin was initially a Spider-Man. Right. Yep. You know, now Kingpin, you know, for a long time now is a is a daredevil villain and owned by the daredevil offices, as it were. So um, and that that came over time because, you know, it just had become so identified that conflict between the two of them uh, that it was, you know, easy to sort of it's like a squatter moving into your house, you know, and then suddenly, <laughs> you, know, like, you know, get rid of it. But yeah, because I mean, it was around that era, wasn't it, that like they started um, reorganizing everything, and you know, there's a Spider-Man office, there's an X-Men office, there's a you know. Um, well, was that think, later on, I think there was no. I think that was always sort of that way. I mean, when I when I came in in eighty whatever, eighty four or whatever, eighty five, you know, there was there was offices that that owned things. I mean, there was an X-Men office, and there was Spider-Man office, and there was offices that had maybe non-related titles but you know daredevil and you know cap or whatever were owned by ralph's office you know those sort of things but then there was an attempt later on or not too long after um you know which was part of the you know kicking me off of daredevil where you know there was a a regrouping under imprints within the imprint right so there what was it marvel Edge, oh, yeah. Yeah. and so you know, yeah. Edge was supposed to be the the street characters, right? Daredevil and the Punisher, and I don't know what else, you know. Um, but, but that was mixed up. For some reason, Ghost Rider, Punisher, yeah. Well, and the Hulk, right? Wasn't Hulk yeah. like because yeah. Bob? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hulk was exactly. already owned Hulk and already owned um, uh, Ghost Rider. But, you know, but then it makes no sense, right? It's not the street characters, then. It's just the characters you think are, I don't know, whatever. Um, but they, yeah, they try to kind of then, you know, sort of like group it differently in that way. But that was also when Marvel had five editors-in-chief, right? That was, the, the, mm-hmm. you know, Bobby was an editor-in-chief. Carl Potts was an editor-in-chief. Um, Bob, 
I can't remember who the other ones were. Bob Budiansky, I think. I don't know how you can have five editors and chiefs, you know, so. Yeah, I I, remember, I was just talking to uh, Tom DeFelco recently. Yeah, and I heard yeah, that. But, yeah, that whole, yeah. Right, well, He was right, the right. major guy before that shakeup, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tom was editor-in-chief, you know, yeah. so to this day, you know, people who knew him, you know, you know, will still say, you know, chief. It's, it's, you know. it's so funny because, like, you keep saying Bobby, and I'm just like, oh, yeah, because, like, I know her as Barbara, so it's, like, just really funny. <laughs> oh, okay. Like, most All people right. know her as Bobby, but, like, yeah, for some reason, um, yeah. This is Barbara in my head. I'm like, no, no, yeah, it's the same person. Right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it was um super interesting. Like this whole like how Midnight Suns comes about, and like I I enjoy Night Stalkers itself, and it's just like I just felt like the Dark Hold stuff was like I guess you guys needed it for whatever reason, but I was like it's always like something I actually skip in the in the rereads. I'm like I can just get to the good stuff. <laughs> but that will, I mean, the the genius quote unquote of what we did. And that by we, I mean Chris, me, Howard, Len, um, you know, was in stitching something together that 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 didn't have any rights to, to sort of be stitched together because yeah. it wasn't it wasn't like sort of it was it was very hodgepodge and dip uh, duct taped and zip tied you know from the get go but we made it work and we we kind of liked what we were doing initially again. Because, you know, it started with Ghost Rider, right? Then it's like, let's do another Ghost Rider book, Spirit of Vengeance, which I think Howard already had in mind anyway. So there's two of them, right? Mm -hmm. um, now, Len had been carrying that Morbius pitch in his back pocket for I don't know how long. And, and you know, the minute he heard there was horror stuff going on, he came into Bobby's office and like, here. And then, and so that made Bobby's job easier. And Chris conveniently as Bobby's assistant <laughs> and I think did much the same. Oh, by the way, I have something here. So kind of the only one that was organic in a way, and I don't again know why they decided on this assembly of characters. Like why not just do a blade book, you know, as opposed to blade Hannibal King and Frank Drake, I mean, I'm glad they did, you know, it's more interesting that way sort of, but, um, you know, was, was pitching out to various writers to kind of come back with proposals for what would you do with these characters? And I just happened to have been, you know, fortunate or skilled enough to kind of come up with something that resonated differently than whatever the other ones were. But it wasn't like there was, you know, like a really, you know, the, the gathering made no sense. So that's probably why I like a dark hole feels discordant Lilith a little bit because it was more just a cool idea that Chris had and then we ended up putting it under this and it was you know tough right you know because yeah. it's not even the you know while the the three characters uh Harkness and I can't remember all of them but you know they were they were against the evil of the dark hold right the the fact was the most recognizable character from the book was the imp right yes. and the pages so it's you know it's a, it's a tricky tricky thing to kind of relate to when all your stories are driven by the guy doing the evil thing yeah and then like well i, I get why you guys kind of plucked a little out of there but it's like the elder gods are like because it's it's briefly mentioned in that one it's like kind of the more infinite interesting stories for me mm -hmm. I, I love the little mythology i do obviously but like yeah like the elder gods i'm just like oh man you mentioned it Why'd you mention if you wouldn't mention that would have been thinking about it? Right. I mean, yeah, it was also, you know, an attempt to kind of come up with your own thing, you know, trying yeah. to make this world its own thing and, and, you know, not necessarily proprietary, although maybe a little bit, but, you know, not just like, oh, yeah, they should be fine. I mean, at one point, I'm I'm 99% certain, you know, we well, maybe they should be fighting Mephisto. And it was like, you know, right, because, all right, Mephisto, you know, he's 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 the big evil. And then we, we move past that, you know, because like, oh, that's just going to be like, everyone's yeah, fighting yeah. Mephisto, you know, so trying to kind of create up, you know, how do you create your Doctor Doom? How do you create your, your whatever, you know, sort of from, from whole cloth? And, and I think we did, a, you know, we did a pretty good job. Oh, definitely. Like I said, once the main Night Stalker book, like, I was hooked. It was just but, like kind of that getting everything up and over to that point. Cause like so many different books, I was just like, okay, now I gotta go find this one. Right, right. 
and, like, and, I, I read it after, like, yeah, obviously after, so it's definitely harder when you're not, like, doing it at the time. Mm-hmm. And I know that um, I remember, uh, you know, while Bobby did not apparently know much about you know, horror, you know, and, and, you know, went blank on the on the Night Stalker, or the Night Stalker, you, you know, reference I tried to make, you know, at one point, you know, she she was a huge fan of of <laughs> Maleficent, you know, the the, the Disney oh. character, which is why Lilith looks like she does, you know, because in discussing her, you know, she's got that, you know, she's got that raised bony you know, forehead, you know, sort of like Maleficent's, you know, crown and horns or whatever. And so when we found that out, then we were like, you know, all right, well, Lilith is going to, is going to, you know, oh, have, cool have some kind of visual nod to, to that, you know, as a, as a nice nod to, you know, Bobby hosting us all. But so you say, you say you feel like it's too gruesome. I don't feel like it's gruesome enough. There, I said it. <laughs> Well, by that, I mean, it's, it's, and this, you know, I've talked with Howard about this, you know, and, and you know, over the, over the years, when we've wanted to revisit visit this, I, I, the thing is, the, we, we began to re revel in the, in the gruesome horrorness of it so fast, you know, meat market and the, the, you know, the, um, uh, can't remember there's a character from one of the latter books with the 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 shield monster guys the doa uh not the shield the hydro you know uh, department of occult antiquities or whatever you know uh, you know one of them like squeezes acid out of its stomach to burn people you know it's it's it, it's just so grisly that it becomes hard to have like a point of entry for i think an ordinary reader you know to kind of play into it and, and i think like ultimately the success of Ghost Rider is more around it's a superhero book with supernatural touches and trappings versus it being a pure play supernatural horror book with superhero action. And I yeah, think that's yeah. what these these at least Night Stalkers became. And and by reveling in that so much, you don't have enough of a point of entry for the everyday reader. Just, that, just for that, rot rap is all I'll say. Yeah, you know, but yeah, yeah, you I know, know, I. What you're saying, but like, I, yeah, that was cool for me. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of counter it to, you know, and this is after the fact, but I sort of counter it to um, the night breed work I did, you know, which is which is very grisly as well and and horrific, and the characters are very, you know, strange and clearly monstrous and everything, but. Um, there's a lot more humor and humanity in, in that. And because they were monstrous, but they weren't, we didn't approach it that way. It, I don't know. And maybe that was, you know, just being invested in, in Clive's world in a different way with that. But I, I don't dislike the Night Stalkers. It's just sort of like being analytical about it, like after the fact. Did we like lose Phil? He's just been like, I think he's like, or did he not off? He's like frozen on my screen. He might be frozen. Yeah. No, oh, there he goes. Oh, there he goes. Just me and you. Um, <laughs> but I do think it's like, I also just think it's too, you know, like he was joking before, or maybe not joking, you know, about it being a 90s book and extreme and grim and, and all that, yeah. that kind of stuff. But it is just, too, it is too intense. It is like everything is, rrr, 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 you know. Blade is always, you know, the par, the supernatural. Can you, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes, we okay. can hear you. Okay. No, I was, I, I, I could see you guys perfectly, so I didn't know I was frozen, but no, I don't, I've been having trouble here. But uh, no, I said my favorite part was the ending where they're like, oh, sorry, we uh, almost got tricked into killing you, but eventually we're going to kill you. Yeah, no, that's it. I love that one. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's like, that's, the, that's what I meant with the beginning of the conversation. You know, it's like, we're going to kill everybody and then we're going to kill ourselves. <laughs> No, oh, I think we froze him again. This is the curse of Lilith, you know. It is. Not you, Lilith, <laughs> the other Lilith. <laughs> was it a, did you have, what was your favorite character dynamic to write, actually? Like, between two characters? Um, you know, I, I like the dynamic between all three of them, you know, but, but, you know, but they would argue all the time. 
you know, and, and that was, that's, that's a, there, there need, I needed to have some, I needed to find some different things, you know, I was so I think intent on like making it grim and her and, and fierce and, you know, and powerful and brooding and, you know, and look how they confront this and how they, they get over on it, that there was never a moment to really sort of like allow it to breathe. So uh, I liked the banter amongst them, but the banter was more just, you know, it, the banter was like 22 pages of, you know, that shot from the first Predator movie where like, you know, Carl Weathers and Schwarzenegger, you know, do the the grip. If you ever seen that? And they do like, oh, the, yeah. you know, and, and it's like, you know, their muscles are bulging and it's like, that's like what it felt like the whole book was all the time. <laughs> All right. Well, anything else for this uh, man, Lil? Uh, no, I think we can let him get back to his evening. All right. Thanks again, guys. And sorry uh, for the delay, but uh, oh, no, that, 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 <laughs> thanks for the walk it, it was out of your control, so you know. It's all... Appreciate the walk down Night Stalker's Lane. Um, as the sun goes down, who knows what yet might happen. Um... <laughs> Uh, but I was thinking next time uh, there's a story you and Margaret did from Solo Avengers number 10. Maybe we'll Dr. Druid! Yes! <laughs> Dr. Druid. Dr. Dopey, as Margaret called him. But um, <laughs> um, uh, but that was fun because that was also with a guy named Lee Weeks, if I recall. Correct? Oh, yes. I believe so, yeah. Um, yeah, we could talk about Dr. Druid. Uh, nice. And another, you know, maybe, maybe if we couldn't, since we couldn't get strange, we should have brought him, uh, you know. Oh, him. yeah. <laughs> It's never too late to pitch. Never too late. Never too late. Never too late. Um, cool. And then uh, for uh, folks who are listening to this, if you are in the Connecticut area on the 27th of July, I will be at something called the Collect Ticon. Collect Ticon, a small one-day show in Montville, Connecticut. Uh, so look it up, and um, I think it's 10 to 4, something like that. So uh, it looks like pretty well populated show from what i've seen from previous years uh photos at least and uh, drop by and say hi oh yeah this and again uh, kids we've met him in person really nice guy he'll give you the time of day he won't just sign your stuff and say get out of here get out of here he's got a pretty cool setup too oh yeah yeah that's right i could actually bring the helmet with me i can't i can't do that when i fly anymore um it's just too much hassle but i can i can definitely bring it to uh collect take on um <laughs> Anyway, uh, thank you, folks. Have a wonderful evening, rest of your evening, and have a great uh, rest of the weekend. Thank you, sir. As always, thank you for your time. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye.